coming up steep driveways, reversing a trailer, and are you going to kill the eight speed dual clutch transmission in the new Santa Fe and Sorrento diesels? That's next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously. Or you could just click the card that's up there now. Frankly, this is the moment I've all been waiting for. See, this story has been in my womb gestating for about a month now, and that's less comfortable than I had hoped. But thankfully, its waters have finally broken. We're about to give birth, I can feel it, to a full-blown answer. One which can trace its lineage all the way back to a proper propeller head with a slide rule and everything, probably even a pocket protector, remember those, at the Hyundai Kia R&D Centre in Namyang, up there in South Korea. So, never let it be said, dude, that I don't escalate inquiries to the highest level for good folk such as you. Now, the backstory here, okay? Back on the 19th of January, <laughs> my cock and I, Coctimus Prime, <laughs> we were chilling in the fat cave, mining our own beeswax, contemplating how humanity can have epistemologically objective sciences in domains that are largely ontologically subjective, such as economics and palliative care. Like, this is a real brain bender for <laughs> he and I. But to be fair, we were also thinking about chicks. <laughs> he does that rather a lot. He's famous for it. He uses all of the muscles except, of course, the one that really matters. Anyway, we were doing this when this email from Larry the Landscaper lobbed. I'm thinking of replacing my Ford Territory with another SUV. I had decided on a Kia Sorento until I saw your article on DCTs, specifically the issue of reversing a box trailer up a steep driveway. Guess what I do every afternoon? Is there a way of mitigating this issue with the use of handbrake, etc., or should I simply discount the Kia and go instead for the Mazda CX-9? Good question, Larry, and at the time, I did so wish I had a good answer for you, but alas, my crystal balls were down for the count on this one, and the lapsed engineer in me still kind of recoils at the prospect of just making shit up. So I stalled for time and asked for more info from Landscaping Lazar. L squared obediently deployed his protractor and tape measure on the driveway. And as you can see, it is a pretty steep driveway, but not actually that long. And I can empathize, dude. About 20 degrees in his case, 21 meters long, and the trailer might weigh, say, 400 kilos on a heavy day. And Larry reverses in at the end of the day, five days a week, after toiling hard, turning busted ass Sydney scrub into the cover of Home Beautiful Repeat, which is kind of what he does. So, because I had no friggin' idea about the duty cycle for this new 8-speed DCT, I reached around to Kia's top engineering dude here in Shitsville, and that does sound so wrong, but anyway, I reached around to Roland Rivero, hashtag good bloke, and then he reached up to the 37.88th parallel or something where the R&D brainiacs hang out in a very cool place you may never have heard of called Namyang. And I'd suggest that everyone, everyone should go to a place like Namyang once in their lives. It's such an engineering fantasy playground. You just go there for the test tracks and the wind tunnels and the anechoic chamber. Like pro tip, have a big fat lunch and then spend 10 minutes in an anechoic chamber. <laughs> They've also got rooms where you can bake, freeze, or break various parts, even whole cars, with great precision, and that's always fun. The dudes there, they do take this stuff very seriously indeed. They've often lost track with just how much fun that stuff can be. Anyway, up there, I'm sure there was a great deal of brow furrowing on this, like, he wants to do what? 
Anywho, Namyang dudes give Laz's driveway and trailer due consideration, and then they go, I'm paraphrasing, that should be fine, dude. Just make sure you do it one up, like get the passengers, if any, out of the vehicle first. And pro tip, do try to avoid hill holding using the throttle and slipping the clutch because in the general domain of transmission good things and transmission bad things, that's kind of bad. They also go, again, I'm paraphrasing, this is a relatively severe operating condition because of the low speed and the low airflow and the high load from gravity and therefore high input heat and low forced convective cooling effect even though the clutch system is wet and it features a dedicated cooling system. Furthermore, the clutch system features thermal self-protection and if that triggers, the clutch is programmed to release at a preset temperature to prevent kind of serious damage. In other words, they're saying, we did our best to idiot-proof things up here, even though humanity always invents a better idiot whenever we attempt to do that. And if that happens, like the thermal protection clutch release trigger thing, not the better idiot, that's inevitable. If that happens, you will lose tractive effort, so in that case, just wait a couple of minutes, dude, and leave the engine running, presumably to maintain oil circulation through the cooler, and then, hey, you can just go again. Yes! I must say that that all sounded quite reasonable to me. But the variables are out there, obviously. How often do you intend to do something like this? How steep and how long is your driveway? How heavy is your trailer? And how capable slash mechanically sympathetic are you as the driver? Because that's a big variable out there. Perhaps, hypothetically, you take your portable aluminium detention cell out from its domicile where it ruins the streetscape for most of the year, and you might do that four times a year or something, the better to get away from it all, yes, and take an acoustically transparent dump somewhere in the magnificent Strayan outback. Perhaps Dingo Piss Creek, which I understand is still quite popular. And of course, your fine van is somewhat stout because of its many and varied inclusions, such as, I don't know, a high-end water closet within arm's length of the dining table and the kitchen. Yes, that's real luxury right there. <coughs> Thank you to agree. Like, you can attend to both ends. That's not funny. You can attend to both ends of the human digestive tract at the same time in a fine van such as this. Amazing, dude. Try doing that at home with your dignity intact. Three or four times a year up the driveway to spoil the neighbour's view and the social amenity generally. That should be fine, dude. Or maybe you're a tradie like Landscaping Lazar, who does this kind of thing every day with a somewhat lighter trailer. But it should be okay if you minimise clutch slip and heed all the other aforementioned propeller-headed advice from up there. While all this was happening, I did also reach around, again, to the dudes at Hyundai, because it strikes me that the first question I would otherwise get asked in the comments would be, yeah, okay, but what about the Santa Fe diesel, dude? And while they are, these vehicles, as far as I can tell, identical in terms of powertrains, the two operations, Hyundai and Kia, they have completely separate product engineering departments in Australia. So I got an answer on this from Wongi over at Hyundai, whose real name is Heelong Wong, but everyone who knows him just calls him Wongi because Australia. And he's also rather a good dude who, like Roland and I guess me, speaks kind of binary and knows all four laws of thermodynamics off the top, favourite, number two, every time. Yes, it's a hit at parties and also with the chicks. Although Wongy, like Roland, is a proper brainiac, whereas I'm just really an interloper who can fake it for brief periods, and I ask you to consider that throughout this report. Anyway, Wongy goes, and I'm paraphrasing here as well, yeah, dude, the 8-speed DCT has this liquid reservoir that runs through an oil cooler, somewhat like a conventional hydraulic auto, but it is dedicated to the wet clutch only, so the fluid is not shared with the transmission's gear sets. 
And this cooling system makes the transmission quite durable. And I'm thinking that, you know, this arrangement, the separate cooler, also means fragments in the cooling oil, if any, from clutch wear over time, don't actually get into the valve bodies or filters in the gearbox. So that's quite the bonus when you think about it. So anyway, Wongy further opines that there are limits to everything, dude. And of course, if you put a 2,000-ish kilo social amenity spoiling caravan behind a Santa Fe diesel and you stall it out on purpose using just the throttle on a steep driveway, it won't actually take geologic time for the thermal protection system to kick in and disengage the clutch, thereby saving it from any further lack of mechanical empathy on your part. Wongi also agreed that a light, you know, Larry Landscaper-esque 500 kilo-ish box trailer would not be an issue in these circumstances, subject to you not intentionally abusing the vehicle just for, I don't know, kicks. Therefore, armed with these two more or less in-tune positions on the transmission and its alleged ability to protect itself, just for shits and giggles, the other day, I tried to invoke the thermal protection system on a Santa Fe DCT diesel on my very own, let's call it, uh, test track, just out there. Which is a euphemism, of course, for the driveway from hell. I kind of live on the side of a mountain, which is such fun when you get bags of concrete delivered. <laughs> At least you don't have to join the gym, so there's that. Mine is rather like landscaping Laz's driveway, only it is twisty for added enjoyment and that means you've got to go slow and slipping the clutch in a transmission like that is inevitable. It rises about 5-ish metres of vertical height and 20-ish metres of pavement. So, ultimately, I did 12 reversing runs with no trailer because, hey, it won't fit in my driveway, but I did do them back to back for maximum heat load and just... I have to say that run 12, okay, felt just the same as run number one. And then no groans, no vibrations, no warning lights, no self-protection system activation, no loss of attractive effort. It didn't even smell friggin' hot. So there's that to consider. I'll put a link to that test, you know, just up there. And I'm confident the transmission is properly heavy duty because that was rather a severe test. So... I'd suggest if you've got a trailer and a driveway and this is a question mark for you on Diesel Santa Fe or Sorrento, I think we can pretty much put that to bed in the overwhelming majority of circumstances. And hey, if we can't and you really hate the concept, there's also the V6 to consider with its conventional epicyclic auto. So there's that. But my conclusion here about the suitability of this DCT for these severe kinds of application is based on two things, right? In part, it's because I've tried to get that transmission to overheat in the driveway, and it was a pretty severe test, but non-abusive, okay? And there's a big difference between them, because you can kill anything or invoke failure anyhow. <laughs> it just depends how you do it, right? And what I'm trying to do here is severe but real world, you know, and non-abusive. So there's a line to be drawn in terms of operation. You can damage anything in just a few seconds if you try hard enough, right? But I've also formed this view about this transmission because two dudes with actual runs on the board, whom I respect in the industry, they did not balk for one second at putting their reputations on the line in relation to responding to this question. They were both absolutely happy to be quoted, and I didn't even need to deploy my cattle prod for that, which is quite common. So I'd suggest that's got to mean something too. I really hope this helps if you're in the market for a new SUV. 